Wing Chun Kung Fu, a lethal style of Chinese fighting that dates back to the 17th century. Now, I'm traveling around the world to spar, train with, and learn from some of today's top Wing Chun practitioners. This is Wing Chun Unfiltered. This is Wing Chun Without Limits. This is Wing Chun Blast. I'm here at Izzo Tactical Combat in Wooddale, Illinois, right outside of Chicago. I'm about ready to go inside and do some chi sao, some sparring, some conditioning training. I'm really stoked about it, so come on inside, let's do this. Meet Dominic Izzo. When it comes to Wing Chun fighters, this guy's at the top of the heap. He's the chief instructor at Izzo Tactical Combat. He has 14 years of Wing Chun experience. His seated bench press is 450 pounds and he's a former amateur boxer. I can't wait to experience Dominic's skill firsthand and see everything he knows about Wing Chun. First up is a round of Chi Sao, a close range drill designed to work reflexes, sensitivity, and structure. I say this a long time to younger guys. <laughs> From the moment we touch hands, I can feel Dominic's strength. His forward energy is unlike anything I've experienced in my time practicing Wing Chun. I know that if I want to land my shots, I'll need to use speed and trickery. Dominic and I trade shots throughout the round. I establish my distance and use my long arms to land quick strikes while he closes in and answers back. The clash of Wing Chun styles makes for an action-packed 90 seconds of training. Next, Dominic will show me one of the exercises that makes his school one of the top Wing Chun destinations in the country, the five-step drill. Five-step drill goes into what happens when you went out of position. So you punch one. I get five hits from here. One. Now i got to start spreading my shots out, which I'll explain too. All of my students understand that this, we don't do that. Most Wing Chun schools do that. I was taught, my first two teachers, you throw a punch please, one. Chain punch, okay? When I was a cop, we used to shoot in that little eight by 11 area in, in, in the range. The reason was for accuracy. You know, if from seven yards, uh, 15 yards, 25 yards, if you can shoot in this area, you can, you can address a bigger area. Yeah, I want, the main reason for um, firing bullets is for blood loss, okay? You want a, a massive volume of blood loss in order to slow the bad guy down. Mm -hmm. You know, you people are shot to terminate life-threatening behavior. Not to wound, not to, not to graze him in the leg. You know, if someone needs to be shot, it's for a purpose. So is our punches, okay? If I can hit this area with, with ammunition, then I can spread my shots out more blood loss. 
Why would I want this bow, the, the, the straight blast is a battering ram. Why would I want that when one hit, two hit, three, four, I want to deliver my punches, spread them out. That's what we want. Because for all I know, you know what, you may be a robot with a steel plate in your head that can handle 10 shots to the head. Right. I want them. I want, plus, do you think my power is going to be, I'm going to have power up here? I have to understand, boom, I got power here coming in. Right. I'm, I'm shorter than you. I got to mm. be able to deliver those powers. So my first punch is here. One, I get five more shots. Two, three, four, five. Now here's five. Five. I'm going to feed this again. I'm keeping this. You are in this position right here. You have to now figure out what is the best method to address this punch and deliver an attack. And then you get five punches. Okay. So I'm punching. I'm going to feed this five until you feel like you know what to address on this. Five. And when you're comfortable, you address it how you want to. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to deliver five again. Now, this is a fight. This is bad position. How do I get out of this position? Five again. Okay, five again. One more time. Five. One, two, Three, four, five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Good, five again. Five, well where's your Wing Chun now? Five again, where's your tools now? Five again. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Good, one, two, three, four, Five again. Throw five again. Good. How what am I gonna do? Five again. One more and one, two, three, four, five. 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 Good. One, two, three, four, five. And we continue and we continue, we continue. The point is, is oh now I'm in a bad position. You got a punch coming in the back of my head. But wait a minute. Sifu said this all the time. Facing. How do you face when you got to this position? How do you recover? How do you recover? How do you do all this stuff? So it doesn't matter what tool you use, wooden dummy, forms, drills, everything is to do the one thing, which is face, go forward, and deliver those punches. Those three things I think are the most important things on the planet. So one thing they really emphasize here is their tactical combat is fitness. It's something that not a lot of Wing Chun schools talk about, but it has a huge impact on the way you fight. Dominic's going to show me some of the fitness drills they do here. I'm going to go through them. I'll probably turn around as a tomato, but it should be fun. Huh? things up, I'll get Dominic's take on a hypothetical fight between two of Wing Chun's most famous practitioners, Ip Man and Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was an anomaly. His physical attributes make him one of a kind, but I think that somewhere along the world there are other people who could do two finger push-ups, there are other people who had the physical attributes that he, he does. Um, Wing Chun speaking, Bruce Lee's Wing Chun was inferior to so many other people's out there. He, he really was. Um, his fighting ability was, was fantastic based on what his ability was to do. That said, I, there's no question Ip Man wins this fight because Ip Man sat there and taught Wing Chun Bruce Lee, or excuse me, taught Bruce Lee Wing Chun. And he's going to understand how to teach if you have every, every student you have to teach differently because of maybe one student's slow, 
Another student is strong. One student is fast. You have to teach them differently. He's already going to know how to handle him, pure and simple. Um, my personal view is that Wing Chun or Bruce Lee would fall to Ipman because Ipman, he, he knew how to teach him, knew what his strengths and weaknesses were. Um, even if he didn't, going back to that, you know, Wing Chun is designed for economy of motion, learning how to deal with stronger, faster, bigger people. Um, even if they didn't train together, it's still going to be a fun because Bruce Lee, he was, he, in the end, he, he did rely on strength and speed. And that's not what Wing Chun's about. It's, it's about all the, you know, the, the economy of motion, angles of attack, all the stuff that Bruce Lee didn't finish his training for. You know, I mean, a couple of years in Wing Chun and he walks out and he does something else. Great, put in the other things. But, um, you know, I mean, they said even on his best day going back that uh, Bruce Lee still could not beat uh, Ip Man or um, Wang Sheng Lung in, in, uh, in contact. So that, to me right there, that says something. Um.